friends, today is going to be my TBR takedown for the month of May. If you are new here, the TBR Takedown is a game that I've been playing for the past few years, trying to get my physical unread TBR shelf down from a really high number down to something more manageable. I think we're about there, so we've kind of changed up the game for this year. Next year, the game will completely change. I don't know what the game's going to be, but I have six months to figure it out. For this year, over here, I shall show you, we have a backlist TBR and a current TBR, as well as the goal number of where our backlist TBR should be. Essentially, the backlist TBR is anything that I had on my shelf prior to the 1st of January 2023. Current TBR is anything I've bought since January 1, 2023. And our goal number is for the backlist TBR. And I have a goal every month. This month my goal was 55 books, but we're starting out our backlist at 53. So I've already reached my goal. And our current TBR is starting at 25. Not awful. It's gonna get worse, but it's not awful. If you want to know about the books that we're talking about that I read, you can visit my wrap-up video where I go through everything in here. I'm just gonna tell you what the books were, whether they came off of a TBR or not, and move on with our life. But first, we must haul all the books. For some reason, these are in reverse order in the stack on my desk, so I must go through them all and put them in the opposite order. First, we have my book of the month club pick for the month and that is The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Do I know what this is about? No. I'm just going to give you the, the highlighted part. After posting a negative book review, a woman living in a remote location begins to wonder if the author is a little touchy or very, very dangerous. In this pulse-pounding novel of psychological suspense and terror from the critically acclaimed author of No Exit and Hairpin Bridge. So essentially this follows a character who writes a negative review of a book and then begins to believe that she's being stalked by the author of the book. Because this is kind of a thing that's been going on in our world lately, as far as like people um, commenting on reviewers' reviews and being absolute asshats and sending their fan bases after them, it felt like it would be something fun to read or terrifying. I don't know which. Then we had a problem. Uh, Thrift Books had a sale where a lot of their books were like three dollars and so I want a lot of books. So um, first we're gonna go with one that doesn't count towards going towards my TBR and that is Stay Awake by Megan Golden. I read this last year. I'm hoping I don't already own a copy of it but as my books are in stacks in the other room I still don't know um, but I don't think I do. So this book follows our main character Liv who wakes up in the back of a taxi and her hands are a little bloody and it just says stay awake, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. And throughout the book, we learned that there was someone who was murdered. There's a murderer. It could be her. But every time she falls asleep, she forgets everything back to a certain point in her life. So she has to stay awake. I really enjoyed it. We then have The Escape Room by Megan Golden. This is actually Megan's debut. I've read two of her books before. I've read Stay Awake and I also read, uh, I'll never remember the name of it at this point, but it's something to do with water. The Lake Swim. The Night Swim? Stay Awake will tell me, right? Yeah, The Night Swim. Okay. Thanks, Stay Awake, for your for your help. Um, this book follows, I think it's four or five people? Four of Wall Street's rising young stars, and they go to an escape room, and people start dying. So I'm here for it. We then have Exiles by Jane Harper. This is technically the third book in the Aaron Falk series, um, the first of which is Dry, and I don't remember the name of the second book. Will it tell me? Force of Nature is the other. Um, there are other books by Jane Harper, but they're not part of like the Aaron Folk compendium. I don't know what this one's about. I just know it's part of the Aaron Folk series. Um, one of my favorite things about Jane Harper is that she really does a fantastic job of making the setting part of the characters of her book. The setting is always a character and I really appreciate that. Her books are set in Australia because she's Australian and I have loved all four of the books from her that I've read. So picked up the fifth book without really knowing what it's about other than it's part of the Aaron Falk series. <clears throat> we then have two books by Kaz Freer. We have Shed No Tears and Stone Cold Heart. These are part of the Kat Kinsella series. I read the first book earlier this year and enjoyed it. Um, and decided that I would continue on even though I did I was like a three something stars 
Um, so it wasn't like my favorite book ever, but I did enjoy it. And so I decided I would continue on with the series. And again, they were on sale from thrift books. This one's a library copy, so it's very shiny and they don't match, but it's fine because I, I feel differently about my mystery thrillers than I feel about like fantasy novels. If they don't match, it's fine. So will I a year from now be repurchasing those? Who knows? We then have Edie in between by Laura Simpson. I honestly don't remember what this book is about, but it's been on my TBR since it came out because the cover looks like a tarot card. And on the back, also a tarot card says, for the Mitchell women, magic is a way of life, but for Edie, it's meant nothing but trouble. So I'm assuming Edie has problems with magic. The cover though, you know? We then have From Bad to Cursed by Lana Harper. This is the sequel to Payback's a Witch, which I read last year um, when trying to help a friend find a comp title for their book. Was it a comp title? No. Did I enjoy it? Yes. This is set in a world where Thistle Grove. It's a Witches of Thistle Grove novel right there. Okay. Uh, so this is set in Thistle Grove. There are these families of witches and each of them I believe has like a specific power that they are best at and every so often they have a battle where whoever the winner is their family becomes the leader of the the families for that year like they get to decide you know what everything's happening unfortunately for the witches in this town those who have more power are more likely to win the battle so it's kind of been a thing where those who have the power have kept the power and our main character in the first book comes back to town after being gone for many years and it's a battle year and things ensue. This is much like many adult romances these days, doesn't follow the same characters, it follows family and friends of the characters of the first book. So excited to get to this at some point as well. Also a sequel, I have Forest Fall by Lyndall Clipstone. This is the sequel to what was the first book? Lake's Edge. Yeah. Uh, in Lake's Edge, it follows a brother and sister duo who were orphaned and raised by a woman and the sister has these weird powers that the woman has always uh, not wanted them to have and she treats them very poorly and there is this guy who is considered like the ruler the lord of the land and he comes across the siblings one day out when he's like visiting the towns and he takes them back to his home and some weird shit happens at the lake's edge hence the name lake's edge and this is a sequel we then have Sarah Normal, number seven, I believe. Yeah, The Secrets of Flynn. The Sarah Normal series is a mid-grade that follows a girl named Sarah, who's her and her father move across the country to live with this little old lady who is a fortune teller in this town that her mother grew up in, and Sarah can see ghosts. And so we're just learning about Sarah and her life and all of those fun things. I've been enjoying these. I've just been picking them up as I've been finding them on sale, so. I have one that I bought earlier this year, which is number nine. I've read one through six. This is number seven, so I'm ready to read it. Normally the last book that we talk about is the, shit, English language. Normally the last book that we talk about is the book club book from my local bookstore, We Berry Books. However, in the month of June, we're reading a book that I already own. So while I was there, I instead picked up A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley because a I mean the name but also it's a very pretty cover so I went with it. Do I know what it's about? No. Do I care? Also no. Okay very quickly we're going to go through the books that I read this month. Again you can find those in the wrap-up. We have The Princess Bride by William Goldman which was a reread so it doesn't come off of either of my shelves. The Golden Frog Games by Clarabelle A. Ortega which was a library book. The Hollow Boy by Jonathan Stroud which was also a library book. This Savage Song by B.E. Schwab, which was actually the TBR jar book pick from last month, so I don't have to unhaul it. The Phone Booth at the Edge of the World by Laura and my Messina, which comes off of the current TBR. Ghost Camera and Dead Lake by Darcy Coates. The Gifts That Bind Us by Caroline O'Donohue, which comes off of the Backlist TBR. The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, which comes off of the current TBR. The Creeping Shadow by Jonathan Stroud, which was a library book. Witch, Volume 13, which comes off of the current TBR. And A Sky Beyond the Storm by Sabah Tahir, which also comes off of the current TBR. I did have a DNF this month, and that was Her Majesty's Royal Coven, but that also was a library book. And so the last thing that we need to do is pick a book from the TBR jar for next month. 
if you are new basically whatever I pull from here I either have to read by the end of the month or unhaul I added this as I started getting very close to my goal for the month and then realized that you know I needed a bigger challenge so <sighs> da, 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 da. I think it's just one the book that we must read this month is Sweet and Bitter Magic, which is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. I did this in a try a chapter book, oh, I don't know, two years ago. So I kind of know what it's about. It's about two girls, one who had her magic taken away, one who needs her magic to do a thing with a thing. It's a romance. I don't know, but we're going to read it and find out or we may unhaul it. Who knows? Let's look at where we are stats wise. Our backlist for the end of the month is at 51. Again, my goal was 55, so we're crushing it. Uh, my current TBR is at 31, which means we went up by six books. Not the best, but it could have been worse had I not read more books off of my current TBR this month. So um, I guess in the end of June, we'll see how things will go from there. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a moon emoji down below so that I know that you were here. That's all I have for today. I post reading, writing book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell down below. Did I just say notification? Who knows? And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>